Welcome to the office on the beach located in the south of Western Australia, around Manglimar to be precise. Google it. In this episode, we'll review a selection of five events that mark 2013. First up is, of course, the Vendée Globe and the great odyssey of this skipper who made us dream during three months. Having turned to professional sailing only four years ago, he has smartly moved up the ladder every year. On Sunday morning, he made it to the top of the table in the world of short-handed oceanic racing by winning the Vendée Globe. The massive crowds that had come to see him finish had to wait as his pace to the line slowed dramatically. His first words give an idea of his mood that evolved during the first few weeks of the race. When I started the race, I didn't even ever consider the chances of winning it, really. I knew that I could, but it, it wasn't the objective. In the Indian Ocean, I said to myself, there aren't many boats left around me. The boat's going well, and I'm sailing well. At that time, I wasn't thinking that I was going to win, but I realized that it was now a possibility. During three months alone at sea, with the pressures of the race and the constant technical gremlins, Francois never topped trying. I tried hard to maintain a good sense of humor about everything all the time, and I think I succeeded. I really invested a lot in keeping the boat in one piece. I never gave in or lost my head. Well, even if I did, it was just for a few seconds, and then I was off again. Always at the front of the fleet, he passes Cape Horn in the lead and it explains how the little jump he had in the South Atlantic came about. I got a really small advantage at the end of the Pacific, and it was pretty insignificant. It was nothing, but nevertheless, I, I had it. And then off the Argentinian coast at one stage, I managed to get some lateral separation to the east at just the right moment. Our mail got caught up in a little storm cell. Francois managed to complete his circumnavigation in the supersonic time of just 78 days. Coming up the harbour channel in Les Sables alone always gives goosebumps, and the young skipper shared his emotions generously with a massively excited crowd. The 34th America's Cup will be remembered as the biggest comeback in the history of the sport. Let's go back to the beginning. With four races win on the scoreboard for Emirates Team New Zealand versus zero for Oracle Team USA, the America's Cup is heading towards New Zealand. Facing the crushing mind of an insolent Kiwi crew and a very fast boat, Jim Espiti will have a word with Tim Boss, Russell Coots. Oh, we need to go back and regroup. Uh, we feel they've got a bit of an edge on us at the moment, especially upwind. And Oracle Team USA goes back to base to make a plan. Number one, tweak the boat to go faster upwind. Number two, Substitute tactician John Kostecki for Ben Ainsley, the best Olympic sailors of all time. And Oracle Team USA starts their amazing comeback. The mountain is a steep one, but the team simply works harder and refuses to give up. Taking races one after the other, the Americans are steadily chipping away at Emirates Team New Zealand's lead. We've just been working so hard. I mean, from when we started the series to where we were now. On September 25, both teams are on equal points with one race to go. Both teams are off the line clean. Oracle Team USA dug its bows in around the first mark to push them seven seconds behind Team New Zealand. Following an adrenaline fueled downwind leg sailed in excess of 40 knots, the battle is intense and the lead changes several times on leg three until Oracle Team USA takes control of the race being noticeably faster upwind. The American team extends its lead to a 39 second stunning come from behind victory. I oh mean this is the greatest moment of my life. I'm just loving every minute of it. I'm doing it with the team around me. It doesn't get any better than this. So the cup will stay in America for now and Emirates Team New Zealand will just have to have another go. I'm, I'm incredibly proud of uh, our team and what they've achieved. Um, I'm gutted that we didn't, uh, didn't get the last one that we needed to take this cup back to New Zealand and you know, it's just uh, yeah, it's very hard to, you know, hard to swallow. 
Many questions remained about the future America's Cup 35, but this will be sorted out in time. Let's all take a moment to celebrate what can only be described as a near fantasy comeback and one of the most riveting America's Cup of all time. These two fabulous events were so exciting, but 2013 was also marked by dramas and tragedies. On May 9, Swedish challenger for the America's Cup, Artemis Racing, is destroyed in the San Francisco Bay. Bart Simpson dies in the accident. The only missing team on the water is Artemis Racing. After the tragic accident that costed the life of Andrew Simpson, the Swedish team is still in the process of conducting its own internal review. It's a shocking experience to, to go through and we have a lot to deal with in the next few days in terms of assuring everybody's well-being. Artemis Racing will only race in the America's Cup if the sailors are confident it is safe to do so. Spin Drift Racing, skipped by Jan Guichard, suffers a spectacular capsize in Ireland. Team director Leo Lucet tells us how and why. Well, it was uh, during the first intro race in Ireland. The wind was blowing 24 to 25 knots. However, the gusts were up in the low 30s. Just after the start, Spin Drift uh, is sailing to leeward of the fleet when a big gust hit and she capsized on their side. So the boat turtled in a matter of a few seconds. Jacques Guichard was injured during the capsize. He broke his pelvis and is in the hospital right now. I just got a front call from his brother Jan, who is with him, and he confirmed that Jacques is all right, but his pelvis is fractured. Yes, sir, the boat was towed back to the shore and she is upright and at the dock now. We're now trying to salvage what we can. The idea is to quickly assess the boat, check if the platform is damaged and if the boat structure is sound. Then uh, we'll consider a solution to bring her back to our base in order to start the repairs as soon as possible. Is practicing with the goal of updating the stock of images. The weather conditions are great, and the trimaran is sailing at good speed in 15 to 20 knots of wind. Suddenly, a much stronger power hits the boat, and Jean Pierre and Roland are taken by surprise. The skipper ease the mainsail urgently, and Roland rushes to the jeep. Standing on the edge for endless seconds, the trimaran is hesitating and could back up right. Roland is able to protect himself, but Jean-Pierre at the helm station is catapulted and falls into the water. The tavern has already passed the point of no return and the capsize is inevitable. The boat slowly fails on their side and turtles when the mast explodes. The helicopter arrives on the scene very quickly and Jean-Pierre is getting prepared for the lift-off. He is in shock and will remain in hospital for two days while his technical team brings the boat back to the shore. Rendezvous next week, same time, same place. Until then, goodbye and fair sailing.